They're not wearing any tops. Both their d are out. I couldn't see. I see dudes walking around the corner with their eyes just popping out of their heads. Oh, I've done that before. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 279 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I remembered the episode. How good's that? That is very good. What are you even here for? Why well, I don't I need her anymore. <laughs> that was, you know, that's most of your job is just remembering what episode we're up to. And right. for, the, for the most part, you do a good job, but last episode <laughs> yeah. you forgot, so I don't think I can trust her to do that job ever again, and now it's my responsibility, and I'll never get it wrong ever again, I guarantee it. Guys, uh, I'm coming to your city, loosebears.com, my tour is on sale. Uh, the first Melbourne show sold out, the second one has like 10 tickets left, uh, then we got Ballarat, Geelong, uh, Ballarat has heaps left, Geelong is filling up, Adelaide just went on sale, uh, and that one's going quick, we got Perth, two Perth shows, Newcastle, weirdly selling incredibly well almost gone sydney uh both two sydney shows are almost full brisbane sold out the second brisbane show sold out so we have added a third brisbane show get that get those tickets i've never done three shows in brisbane before so uh get them now then we've got gold coast uh and we're probably going to add tasmania at some point but that for the most part is the tour get your tickets now um, I also have uh, an update uh, about Keelan. Uh, obviously, he was on the show last week talking about his trip, upcoming trip to America. He's in America now, and I've just got an update from Keelan's mother. She says that while he was in L.A., he went to Skid Row and was descended upon by several homeless and has been stabbed to death. So uh, rest in peace to Keelan. He will be missed. Um, now, I, uh, I had a life-changing experience at the gym recently yeah my life changed all right this was uh yesterday i woke up at six in the morning and i went to the gym as i do because this is my new life all right i'm determined to become the world's first butterface comedian you know you've heard of butterfield what about butterface you know because i know that with what's going on with my head at the moment and my speech you know there's not much to look for there but if i can have an insane rig I'll be the world's first butterface comedian where people will come to see me and they'll go, this guy's really hot if you look at shoulders down. That's what I really <laughs> want to be is just like an incredibly attractive comedian until I take off my face mask. That's really going to be me. See, what this is what, what frustrates me about not having my, my surgeries during COVID. If I had this shit done, I just would, would have been like a normal guy with a lisp. Mm. You know, because everyone was wearing a face mask. No, nobody would have known. I totally understand it now. A lot of these uglies are still wearing masks. The only people wearing masks now are, are the vulnerable, as they should, and the uglies, as they absolutely even more should. they got even more of a reason to wear a mask for the rest of us, you know. Because these immunocompromised people are selfish. They're just doing it to help themselves. That's mm. a selfish reason to wear a mask. But if you're an ugly person wearing a mask, thank you very much. Because we don't want to see it. And, and that's me included. I'm, I'm a very big advocate of masks and, and I'm going to have the world's, the world's best rig in comedy with, with definitely like a, a middle to below average head for now because the gap is closing. It is very slowly closing. Last episode, I can fit my thumb in it. Now, not so much. So it's going to be gone soon, which is a little bit frustrating for me because I just got back from Gold Coast and Brisbane. I did a few shows, thanks to everyone who came out. And I wrote some incredible material about having a really bad gap tooth. And I was like, man, this stuff is so funny. It's so good. And in about two months, it's just going to be, can't use it. Because it's just about me having a gap tooth. So I, I, I'm going to have to film it somehow. Or maybe I'm just going to have to... You know what I'll do? What I'll do is uh, is when the gap tooth goes away, before I get on stage, I'll get like a black marker and I'll draw it back in <laughs> just to make sure the jokes work. That's what I'm going to do. Problem solved. Perfect. But anyway, what I'm saying is I'm a, I'm a health addict. I'm a health nut and I'm going to have the best rig in comedy. Guaranteed. All right? Because I know that I've lost all of my face points, so I need to raise my body points. I lost so much weight from not being able to eat. I'm putting it back on, ladies and gentlemen. All these people going, oh, it's so hard to put on weight. Can't I can't eat solid food yet, all right? And I've, I've worked it out. You're not eating enough food, okay? Do you know what, what I'm putting in the blender? Everything. Everything. It, will it blend? That's my whole fucking life. Remember that show 
like on YouTube from 10 years ago, that weird guy who just rocked up was like, well, it blend. And he would put a broom in the blender just to see if his blender could blend a broom. That's like me, but with every single fucking meal that I have every day, I just rock up in the kitchen. I turn on, I turn on the, uh, the fucking, I don't even know what it's called. What's that really popular blender that everybody has? A Nutribullet. Nutribullet. I turn on my Nutribullet and I go, will it blend? And I just put my whole breakfast in there. I've just started getting crazy with it, man. What I started to do is, is I just was like, all right, well, I'll just start small. And I put like oats and milk in there. I was like, oh, cool. Now I put oats and blueberry and peanut butter and vitamin C powder and protein powder and creatine uh, and protein yogurt and half a liter of milk uh, and cinnamon. And then this morning I put a coffee shot in there. I'm just, it, the list grows. Pretty soon I'm going to be like, well, you know what, this is, you know, nutritionally really good, but I need a bit of testosterone. Let's put in some bull semen because I need the best rig in comedy because I've lost all my face points. But this is getting me to my point where my life changed at the gym, all right? Mm-hmm. And I don't appreciate you distracting me from telling the story, Rosie. Okay. You got me on a tangent. I, my life changed at the gym. I fell in love. I thought I was in love. I wasn't. I fell in love at the gym. You know how they play like shit music film clips on TV? Mm. Yep, yep. I was in the gym, six in the morning. It's kind of busy, kind of not. Lots mm. of other people around, but, you know, not too packed. And uh, on all of the TVs comes uh, Katy Perry's California Girls film clip. And I'd never watched it, oh. really. Yeah. I'd never really been into her music. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's cool. Uh, but that film clip where she's with Snoop Dogg and she's just she's just naked in the clouds. I I fell in love with Katy Perry yesterday and uh, I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to have to fly across the country to track her down after seeing that film clip. Have you watched that film clip? Uh, I don't think I've watched the whole thing, but like I know what you're talking about. I think it was her album cover for a like Teenage Dream yes. album. Yeah. 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 I watched that that film clip and and I fell in love with her. I was I was I was doing bench press and then I sat up and it was on the TV and I just watched the whole thing on mute. <laughs> I was listening to music. I wasn't I was like I don't want I don't think that listening to her song that goes with her film clip is going to enhance the experience. All I really need is a visual. I fell in love. But not only did I fall in love with Katy Perry, I watched at least five other dudes also fall in love with her. <laughs> like I stopped and I was looking at the TV and I was like, oh my God, I was mesmerised. Snoop Dogg came on to do his verse and I looked away and I saw this other dude just look away from the TV and look at me. And then, I, and then, and then Katy Perry comes back and I just look around the gym and like five men had just stopped <laughs> exercising. They were just, just fucking hypnotised by <laughs> Katy Perry shooting fucking whipped cream out of her tits <laughs> at Snoop Dogg and we all fell in love and uh, we've actually uh, we actually all uh, walked out of the gym together we started up a club we're all saving up for tickets to LA to, to go and meet our new bride um, so that's what's going on with me and and that's really my my biggest motivator to get to the gym, get to the gym you know is is not Obviously, I would like to look good for my new wife, Katy Perry. Obviously, you know, who wouldn't? You know, she's beautiful. Have you seen the film clip? But I'm just hoping that if I go there at roughly the same time, that clip will play again and I'll get to watch it while I'm working out. Um, so I've, I've fall, I haven't broken the news to my girl, uh, but you know what? If she, if she gives me some pushback, I'll just turn it on and I think she'll understand. I think she'll understand. And, you know, that's that's what it is. Why doesn't what happened to Katy Perry? She was like the the hottest. She had woman. a baby now, I think, with Orlando Bloom. Oh, yeah, and then um, I think she's like a she's a judge on American Idol, I believe. Right, mm. right, yeah. She should. Go she back still to, makes like music, I think. She should go back to making film clips. I reckon that was her <laughs> real talent. Is like her, her music's not bad, mm. you know. I kissed a girl. Banger, <laughs> sexual awakening for many women. Great, mm. right? But even better, the, the film clip to I Kiss the Girl, undeniably. So, look, I'm, uh, I'll am i let you guys know how the wedding's gone. I need to go over to LA anyway to pick up Keelan's body. So mm. I, uh, I'm going to uh, 
Yeah, it, it's a sad trip, but also a happy trip. New beginnings. Um, I was in Gold Coast doing some shows. So I, I went to Gold Coast. Uh, I, just, I was like headlining clubs. They weren't exactly like my shows. I was just doing clubs and a bunch of you guys showed up, which was awesome. There was a bunch of other comedians as well that did really well. Uh, and it was really good, man, because I, uh, I didn't know how long I could perform for. It was my first gigs back since the surgery, like after six weeks off, and I didn't know – you know, if I'd be able to do my old gear, if, if I could kind of speak clearly enough, if I could perform properly. Um, but yeah, I did really well. The first show I did, like, I was only booked to do 20 minutes, half an hour. I did like half an hour. And after that, I was like, fucked. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't think I can do like a full hour show yet. Um, but then the second gig, I uh, was aiming to do 30 minutes. I ended up doing like 50 and I felt really good after. So I'm like, okay, cool. I just needed to like... Do a bit of a run up to getting back into doing the show. So I think that uh, I, after doing that, I feel way more confident about this too. I reckon it's going to be a lot of fun. Gap year, get your tickets now, loosebears.com. After pay available for all you people uh, that are being ravaged by the the increasing cost of living and the stagnating of wages. Um, really good stuff. What am I missing? Uh, you have a voice uh, message for the My Mackers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So let's hear it. Pass me the phone. We got a little update as well from uh, a previous episode. Uh, as you guys know, I was railing against the My Maccas app and uh, a lot of a lot of you guys uh, who I previously would have thought of as fans but now realise they're just losers actually have the My Maccas app on their phone and were very, like, very pro the My Maccas app. And... I just want you to know that I, I I see you, I hear you, and I want you to throw your phone in the ocean because you don't deserve to have it. I think that as damaging to the environment as it would be to throw like thousands of phones into the sea, I think that the fish and octopus would understand if all those phones had the MyMacus app on it because if you have that app on your phone, it's really not enough to delete it. You need to get rid of the phone. It's like uh, I, I view that app as like a terminal disease. It's the AIDS of apps. So uh, we have this uh, this guy, uh, Angus, sent in a little voice memo to the Spearhead Sunday's Instagram about the MyMacas app. Uh, let's let's hear him out. So I tried the MyMacas. Never mind. I'm a bit of an idiot, and that's absolutely not what uh, his message is about. I'm now immediately remembering what the actual message is about. Yeah, okay, let's cut this. It's No, let's oh, leave it okay. in. Okay. This is reality, okay? This is a show. I'm, I'm not a liar, okay? I would never lie to my audience. Sometimes I think I know what I'm doing, but I actually don't. And while it might be a good production decision to, to suggest cutting it out, but it's not a good Spearhead Sunday's decision because that's not really what we do here. Rosie gets, gets a new lighting set up, makes it look nice, and she now thinks we're going to edit the show well as well. That's too much. All right? So that's not what happened. That, <laughs> Is not at all what this message is about. This this guy actually agrees with me. I would never have someone with the My Maccas app on their phone on this show. I would never do that. All right? What I suggested is the whole reason this shit started is every time you go through the Maccas drive through in Australia, they don't say hello. They go, are you using the My Maccas app today? And you have to go, no. Can I get this? Or you have to ignore the question and go, can I get this? And we, I know the employees don't want to say it. A bunch of people were like, oh, it's not our fault. Our managers help make us say it. We have to say it. It's corporate policy. Oh, okay. You know what? You would hang at the Nuremberg trials if that was your defense. Oh, I was just following orders. It's not my fault that, that I contributed to the Holocaust. I was told to by my boss. My hands were tied. You're complicit, all right? If you're at work and you're, and, and you're saying every day, are you using the My Maccas app? You should be ashamed of yourself for having no spine, all right? Go and work at Red Rooster. Have some dignity. There's no dignity at Red Rooster. But what I was saying was, I think the appropriate response, you pull up to the drive through someone else is driving, you're in the passenger seat. You pull up to the drive-thru and the person in the box who lives in the box goes, hi, are you using the My Maccas app today? You need to go, no, are you? And it just breaks their brain because they're either looking for a no, a yes, or an ignore. 
If you flip it around and go, no, are you using the My Macus app? They don't know what to do. And that, it's quite amusing. Quite similar to when you're approached by somebody selling you something on the street or trying to get you to sign up for a charity, all right? One of those scams. They go, hey. And they, and they, and they point out something fucking ridiculous about you. You know, thinking that it would strike up a conversation because that's what we're told to do by their sales manager. Don't just walk up to them and start selling them. You need to get their attention first by being fun and quirky. You know how they do that. How you see them fucking 10 meters away and and you accidentally make eye contact with them and then they start going... And they start waving at you. Like trying to get you to make (laughs) eye contact again and and if you look at them again, you're fucked. And they, and they go, oh, man, I love your shoes. He goes, you don't want to talk to me about my fucking shoes, do you? You want to talk to me about famine in Africa? Way less exciting. If you want to talk shoes, I'll talk shoes. Imagine if I did that to anyone. Like, someone, like I, I reckon we should start doing that to them. Like we see a, we see a fucking salesperson for World Vision and they're doing the, ah, ah, and then you from 10 meters back should start waving at them. Ah, but but don't walk any closer. <laughs> <laughs> just, just start waving back at them, but don't move closer because they can't walk away from their booth. But if you go closer to them, you're going to have to have a fake conversation about your handbag that then just unnaturally goes into, so what do you think about AIDS in Africa? I don't know, it's bad. <laughs> What do you want? Oh, it's awesome. Great. I think it's sick. I hate mosquitoes. You don't want that, right? So what you want to do is I reckon, I like that. That's a new one. Just wave from a distance and don't go anywhere near them. But my my go-to method that works flawlessly with salespeople everywhere is they come up to you and they go, hey, and you just look at them and you go, sorry, I'm gay. And then you keep walking. And they have no idea what to do because it's not like oh, I don't have time. It's not like, oh, because they're waiting for a no. I did sales. You hear a no, they know what to say to you. They're waiting for the no. They're expecting it. You think you're the first person to say no to an annoying salesperson? No, give them something unique. Sorry, I'm gay. And then it just, they have no idea because then they go, oh, hang on. Does he think that this charity is homophobic? Like, they have no idea what to say. And by the time they compute what you've said to them, you're out of talking dis- distance. It's, they're fucked. It's perfect. If you're a man, another one is, sorry, I'm pregnant. And they'll just go. Okay. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> it is. But it works. What are they going to do? Oh, that's. Because because one, right, being gay does not mean that you, you can't... Oh, sorry, I can't donate to charities. I'm actually gay. Like, it has nothing to do with the charity at, or your ability to donate. It has nothing to do with anything. It just gives them enough of, enough of uh, a mental confusion attack to be able to just walk past them and they don't annoy you. Highly recommend it. Works every time. Actually, one time... It didn't work. I, this woman comes up, she's doing some charity, and I just went, oh, sorry, I'm gay. And she, bam, immediately goes, don't worry, we love everybody here at charity and we would love to have your support. And I was like, oh, my God, this woman is the best salesperson in the world. Um, but then I just walked away. So anyway... Right? This is a similar <laughs> vein, okay? And stop interrupting me and getting me onto tangents, okay? I'm trying to tell this one story. I haven't story. done anything. And, and, and you know what? That doesn't, and that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I, this is similar, okay? Let's say you get into the My Mac is app thing. Don't say no, because then they go, you should download it. Don't say yes, because they ain't going to throw your phone in the ocean. What you want to say is they go, hi, are you using the My Macca's app today? And then what you want to do is go, no, are you? And they just can't comprehend it. Now, Angus has gone out and done this. Is that right? Yes. Thank fuck. What are we up? Fucking 20 minutes in? 20 minutes. And I've worked out what we're doing. Angus has gone out and done this and he's come back with results. Thing where, you know... 
I ask you, you know, uh, what kind of Mac is he using that my Mac is up today? And I went for a second, went, no, are you? And the guy didn't say anything for about two seconds. I went, what can I get you today? Just completely ignored what I said. And when I got to the window, just stared blankly at me. Perfect. It was, it was amazing. I haven't stopped doing it since. <laughs> I think they've, uh, they know my car now. They've stopped asking me. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Every time you're asked, are you using the My Maccas app? Just go, no. Are you? Fuck it. I reckon we extend this to all types of commun- consumer interactions. You go to the shops and like, are you using your Flybys card today? No. Are you? Oh, I like Flybys or like Woolies Rewards. You're ruining my point. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> what are you using Flybys points for? I don't know. I think you just collect them up and eventually you get a discount. Oh, I like what? Broccoli? Probably. Have you seen <laughs> the price of lettuce? Yeah, but just don't buy lettuce. Have you ever used the points? No. This is what I mean. <laughs> you don't like the points. You like the idea of collecting some imaginary fucking bullshit. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. That's what you like. You like uh, you've been tricked into giving all of your fucking consumer behavior to his company for imaginary it's you've been scammed it's the original cryptocurrency mm. you're stuck in an nft scam that's what's happened every time someone goes oh are you using a flybys points are you using your flybys card you go no are you and they'll go oh well, well no i'm actually behind the register and then by that time you go oh cool and you pull out your debit card and then you pay easy it's done the one time I will say that that is completely unacceptable behavior, all right? And I won't stand for it at all. Is when you're listening to this show and I go, do you support me on Patreon yet? If one of you motherfuckers goes, no, do you? Death penalty. Because I I absolutely would support myself on Patreon if I could. So anyway, guys, I'm in love with Katy Perry. But I'm in love with... Katy Perry, when she released that film clip. Like, if I saw her on the street, I'd be like, oh, what a pretty lady. But if I saw her shooting whipped cream out of her tits, I'd be like, oh, my God, it's my wife. Um, Now, anyway, I was on the Gold Coast, right, which is the story I've been trying to tell since I started this episode, but I keep getting rudely interrupted by someone in the room. (laughs) I went to the Gold Coast to do these shows, and uh, I love Manscaped. (laughs) I love Manscaped. Today's sponsor, manscaped.com. I I love Manscaped. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. You see, I'm trying to tell this story and Rosie's interrupting me. Oh, you have to do ad reads. (laughs) She doesn't want to hear this fucking story. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0. The best ball bag trimmer in the game. So much better than the Gold Coast story. Uh, Guys, I use this product all the time, all right? I've trimmed up my beard nice and my neck here with with the Lawnmower 4.0. It's got gar. I've never cut myself using this thing. I have absolutely shredded my nuts on a couple of razors before. It is not a fun experience. Manscaped, it's never happened. It's never happened to me. And that's a lot more than what I can say for a lot of other razors out there. Normal razors, safety razors, uh, fucking electric razors that are like three times the price from Shaver Shop, that scam artist joint. Manscaped.com, way better. All right, they've got nose trimmers. They've got... uh, little grooming packs, little travel packs with like nail clippers and scissors. I take those on the plane. Really good stuff. In my check baggage, not on carry-on. You'll get arrested. Uh, And they also released uh, a bunch of grooming products. Like uh, they've got um, deodorant and they've got uh, lip balm, which I used heaps after my surgery when my lips were all fucked up. I don't know. It's just really good stuff. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS uh, for 20% off and free shipping. It's a great deal. Support the brands that support the show. And uh, enjoy your balls. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Right, if you let me finish my story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Gold Coast. Now, I haven't been on a plane since I came home to Melbourne, which was like during pandemic when it was like really scary. I haven't been on a flight since then, since I flew oh. home from Perth last year. I haven't been on a plane since then. 
I don't think anyway. I might have to mention. Oh no, we went to Sydney as well for SBS. I'm a liar. I went to Sydney for SBS. Now that was fine. That was fun. Mm. But I haven't been on a plane since then. A couple months ago, which <laughs> may as well be a decade. Completely deleted that trip from my memory. That didn't exist until you jogged it. Mm. She's trying to get me to talk about Sydney instead of the Gold Coast. <laughs> it's chic. Um, I didn't know that you're supposed to wear a mask on the plane. I didn't know that. I, I, I've been like maskless for so long. Every time I see COVID, my brain immediately filters it into don't want to think about it territory. Anytime I hear anything COVID or restrictions or masks, for my own mental health, my brain has compartmentalized that into things to not even think about. I feel like I'm pretty good with emotions and emotional processing, but with COVID, I've done the man thing of squash it down, don't want to think about it. <laughs> so anytime I hear anything about COVID, I, my, my eyes glaze over and my brain fogs up and music starts playing in my head because I don't want to hear about it. And that goes for like rules and restrictions now. I just don't, I don't give a fuck. I, I cannot care about it anymore. And now I thought that because I was in the airport, you don't have to wear masks in the airport. No one's wearing them. So I'm like, oh, it's optional. Yeah, that's so strange. Yeah. And then I get on the plane and I'm not wearing a mask and no one says anything. So I'm like, oh, it's optional. And then about an hour into the flight, uh, the guy next to me keeps looking at me, giving me dirty looks. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, dude, I'm fucking big. I'm sorry. You know, I'm in the middle. I get both the armrests. That's how it fucking works. I'm assuming this guy's annoyed because I'm big. It's like, I can't do anything about it. All right. You're lucky that I'm not also 300 kilos. Okay. I'm in their fucking exit row, all right? For some reason, there's a woman who's like 5'3 in the exit row. That should be illegal. Shouldn't be legal, all right? You can't have fatties in the exit row and you can't have small people in the exit row. The exit row is for heroes like myself. Me only. <laughs> One time I saw an exit, I was behind the exit row and, and there was like, Three young, small women in the exit row. I was like, oh, wait, we're dying on the plane. If it goes down, they're going to try and lift up. It's like a 25-kilo door, and you have to lift it up, like, sideways while we're going underwater. I'm like, we're just going to drown on the plane. It's over. And, uh, you know, same is true when you have, like, a 300-kilo guy. It's like, he's sure, he, he'll be able to open the door, but then he won't be able to fit out of it. And then we're all just, he's going to be like a giant bath plug, and we're all going to get fucked. But anyway, I'm a hero in the exit row making sure that everyone gets there safe, okay? As far as I'm concerned, that guy should be looking at me and going, oh, my God, would you like a blowjob? And I say, no, thanks, we're on a plane. That's disgusting. Put it away, right? But he's giving me dirty looks. And then the, the flight attendant comes down and they're giving everyone their drinks, right? I'm flying virgin, so we get complimentary water. Mm-hmm. What's the cheap one now? It's not Tiger. Tiger's dead. Jetstar? Yeah, Jetstar's a cheaper one. I think there's an even cheaper one now. Because Tiger was a real budget airline. But then mm. I think it's like Rex. I don't think I've ever flown it before. I know Qantas is like the best one. Yeah, Qantas it? is, is, the, is well, Emirates is the best, but they don't really do Australia. Qantas is amazing. Oh. Yep, yep. Qantas, like, you're only allowed to work there if you're an eight or above. It's an unwritten rule. Wow. Yeah. Virgin, you know, has some attractive people, but they don't have the experience to get to Qantas. And then they just have the, the people that are really good flight attendants, but just aren't hot enough to make it to Qantas. Mm. And it's an appalling rule, but I'm not going to lie. It's also an appreciated when you get a Qantas flight. You're like, look at that. I feel like I'm watching a Katy Perry film clip. <laughs> Anyway, this guy's giving me dirty looks the whole flight. The flight attendant comes up to me and she goes, uh, uh, would you like some water, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, no worries. And then, and then she gets down really close to me and she, and she gets right in my face and she goes, and do you have a mask? And I was like, what a fucking bitch. And I go, no, I don't. She goes, would you like one? And I was like, yeah, all right, I'll, yes, because I didn't have one. I'm like, well, you don't need to wear them. And I... 
She gives one to me and I put it on and I, I look around and I am the only person not wearing a mask. <laughs> like every other person is wearing a mask and everyone around me like lo- looks at the flight attendant like, thank you. And I <laughs> am not an anti-mask guy. I put it on straight away and I was like, oh, I guess you have to wear it. I didn't know. I got treated like some conspiracy theorist nutter that was probably going to stand up and go, it's all a scam, you're all sheep. I just didn't remember, and then they when I, they let me get on the plane without it. Yeah, so, that's weird. They should have told you before you got on the plane. Yeah. On the other flight I took, they were handing them out to anyone who didn't have one and just going, oh, you need to wear it. Uh, but they didn't do that to me, and then I got I got treated like some conspiracy theorist, probably deservedly as well. I bet like <laughs> 99% of the time when you go, do you have a mask? They respond, no. What do I need that for? I was just like, oh, no, I, I, I forgot. She's like, well, would you like to put one on? I'm like, well, not really, but I'll do it. But anyways, I put my mask on. She gave me my water and I uh, took it off to drink. So, so the guy next to me who was giving me the dirty looks and it's like, yeah, all right, you know, I'll pretend that, that that's working <laughs> for now. That's, that is one thing that, that doesn't make sense is you can, if the mask does something, why is everyone allowed to take them off to drink and mm. eat? And, and, and to, you're allowed to pull them down to sneeze as well is a, is a common one, which almost feels more natural to do, but I understand mm. is retarded. It's just, but it's also like fucking gross when you sneeze into your mask. Mm. You have to change then, it, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm not switching out masks like I'm in Call of Duty. I'm too doing tactical reloads on the mask. It's not happening. Anyway, um, I have uh, – are you happy? I got through the Gold Coast yeah, story. Yeah, good right, job, That Liz. was it, yeah. No thanks to you trying to keep me away from it. Um, <laughs> the Gold Coast is, like, sad now. I had a very sad experience on the Gold Coast. It's not fun anymore. The only thing that, that – because it used to be, like – the party place. And I was there on a Friday and a Saturday night and mm-hmm. every other time I've been there, it's like crazy, it's hectic, someone's getting like punched in the head, it's mental. And I was in Surfers as well, Surfers Paradise, which is the the most dishonest name for a suburb I've ever heard. That'd be like calling Frankston like uh, no stabbings. You know, it's like a lie. So it's not a surfer's paradise. There's no waves. The beach is okay to walk along. It's mainly just for kids on schoolies to, like, have unprotected sex and then punch each other in the back of the head outside the McDonald's. That's what it's for. And to stare at the homeless guy that walks around in a woman's bikini. That's surfer's paradise, right? But it was real sad when I was there. The only thing that remained of the Gold Coast that I know is white male Uber drivers. The only place in the country where every time you book an Uber, you'll get a name like Steve is coming to pick you up. Oh, yeah, the Uber driver that we had the The, last year was so good. Every single – and they're all like recently divorced, like party (laughs) dudes that are kind of living vicariously – through whoever they're driving. Like, that's the vibe. It's like, fuck, tell me what you boys are up to tonight, please. And then, and then like, there's there's a small part of them in, in the back of their minds, like, that really kind of want to hear, like, oh, come with us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what they want, right? But just going through my Uber trips, right, this is, this is the Gold Coast. This is how you explain the Gold Coast in, like, Two minutes, okay? Listen to my Uber driver names. We've got Adam. Trip one. Trip two, Gary. (laughs) Trip three, Mary. Trip four, Brett. Brett, Mary, Adam. Like just white people only driving Uber. The only place in the world where it's only like white dudes... And chicks driving Uber. It's a crazy phenomenon. I didn't get one Muhammad. I didn't get one. I didn't notice all of those names had two syllables max. 
It was mostly a one-syllable Uber driver name. That doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. That's how white the Gold Coast is. So I was there, and it was just a little bit sad. I decided to leave surfers because every time I'm there, I didn't book the hotel. I get put up in surfers, and it's just hell. It's like a touristy, horrible thing. No one there lives there. Everyone is there to, like, take. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's there for them to have a party and get fucked up and who cares about the locals or the environment or the culture of... Because they don't live there. They're there to fuck it up. It's like Vegas, but way worse. So I was like, you know what? This time I go, I'm going to get out and go to where people actually live. And I went to Miami, which I didn't even know there was a place called Miami on the Gold Coast. I get an Uber out there. Brett takes me out to Miami. And uh, I walk the beach there. And it's amazing. Beautiful. I have never in my life seen so many bare breasts on a beach that is absolutely not a nudist beach. I saw less covered breasts than I did bare ones. What? Oh my God. Tits out everywhere, right? Everywhere. And I didn't know this. I don't, I don't know if this is a thing or if I just got lucky. <laughs> But I go to the beach and I see an old guy walking off the beach towards me. And I just see him do like the old man double take. Like he was walking towards me and he looks over to his side and, and he looks over again. And he's like, oh, like raises his eyebrows and then starts smiling. I'm like, what the fuck is he looking at? And then I turn the corner and I like walk over this woman with her tits out. And I was trying to avoid walking into the man, but it just made me look like I took that path to like look over her tits. <laughs> and uh, and then I'm like, oh whoa! And then I start walking the other way, and and then um, I I wanted to I wanted a place to like sit and think about my set for a little bit. So I find these rocks, really really big rocks, that are like overhanging that you can kind of sit under. And uh, there were these two girls that like taking photos of each other, I guess, for Instagram. And I didn't, I didn't look at them, but they're just taking photos. I'm like, oh, I can't sit there. I want to sit by myself. And I walk around this giant boulder and then there's uh, like another woman like sunbathing with her tits out. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to sit around there. And I walk around a different boulder, find a place, and I sit by myself finally, right? And uh, I reckon three times around... I see dudes walking around the corner with their eyes just popping out of their heads because they did the same thing that I had. Looking for a place to sit. They walk into tits. They go, whoa, walk around. Then they see me. They go, oh, that place is taken. It was great, right? And then anyway, I go through. I see more girls walking with their tits out just past the rock. I'm like, okay, I think I need to leave this place. I'm feeling like I'm seeing way too many boobs for me to like, for, to, for me to even convince myself that I'm there to think about my set, you know? Like I was, the goal was there. The goal was to go there to think about my set, but, you know, I'd be lying to myself if I wasn't partially there to be like, oh, more tits. So I'm like, all right, I need to leave. So I go to leave and uh, I walk, I again walk past the girls who were like in the cave taking photos of themselves. And I'm like, oh man, I kind of need a photo of me on the Gold Coast because I haven't posted on Instagram for ages. So I go, you know what? That's a cool spot to take a photo. I'll go up and I'll, I'll take a photo of the girls for them because they probably want one together and they're not getting it. And then I'll ask them to take a photo of me. And I go up to the girls and I'm like, hey, would you like me to take a photo? And one of the girls turns around and her tits are out. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and, they're, and they're not wearing any tops. Both their tits are out. I couldn't see. from the, But they turn around and they're just assaulted with tits. And, and they go, we're good, thanks. I'm like, I didn't know you had your tits out. Who's taking photos of each other with their boobs out? They must have been like OnlyFans girls or something. They thought that I'd come up to them to take photos of them so I could get a closer look at their tits. I just wanted a cool photo. And that's why I didn't post at all while I was on the Gold Coast. I'm like, you that's know what? so embarrassing. I'm leaving. This speech is clearly not for me. And then I looked it up like nudist beach Gold Coast and there isn't one. <laughs> they were just doing that. So uh, Miami Beach on a Saturday when it's warm. 
That's what you'll see. Right. Now, I guess uh, I wanted to get into some emails here, uh, but I wanted to briefly talk about John Barillaro before we do that. Um, John Barillaro, uh, all of this stuff is now coming out about the trade role that he himself set up. So quick recap. recap. John Barillaro uh, got accused of uh, corruption uh, in his position and then ended up s stepping down. He ended up suing friendly Geordies uh, and he retired from politics, right? Uh, and everyone was like, oh, okay, cool. Seems like uh, that's worked itself out, you know? Like uh, this guy has done a lot of seemingly shady things, has appeared to have potentially in other people's point of view committed a bit of uh, apparent corruption, all unproven. This is all hearsay. Absolutely not fact. And then he's retired from politics, which is about as close to admitting it as you can get when mm -hmm. it comes to politicians, right? Uh, but then a few months after that, everyone leaves him alone. Like, oh, great, we got rid of him, no worries. A new job gets announced, the New York trade role. And the role is just to find wealthy Americans and talk to them about the idea of investing in Australian businesses. Basically a fake job, right? Half a million dollars a year, and this job goes to none other than John Barillaro. And when you have a look at when John Barillaro was in office, that position was created and announced by him, right? So everyone immediately is like, okay, this is very suspicious. This guy retires from politics and immediately gets a job that he announced, and it's a half a million dollar a year job, all expenses paid, the travel, the food, everything. Half a million is the wage, right? If he incurs any expenses while doing that, which of course he will, expensive dinners, food, travel, a lot of stuff that can't really be scrutinized. That's all billed to the government. And then also he got a $900,000 office renovation in New York too. So this is like, I don't know, half a million for him, but maybe costing $2 million a year to the taxpayer. Right? So everyone starts going, hang on, why has he got the job? And then it comes out that a different woman was actually given the job before John retired. And then two days before he retired, she has the job taken away from her. And in her words, was told the job was going to be a present for someone. And then John retires from politics. And then it's announced that he gets the job. So everyone is immediately like, what the fuck is going on? This sounds super corrupt. This sounds like absolute bullshit. And then the premier of Sydney comes out and goes, actually, all of the processes were followed, blah, 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 blah. It's not corruption. He's the most qualified person for the job. And then it comes out that this woman was actually the most qualified person. She got the job and it was taken away, right? Now he stepped down from the job. Right? Immediately after all of this stuff comes out, he steps down from the job, which again is about as close as a politician can come to admitting, yeah, that was a little bit fucking shady, wasn't it? But now it's come out. John Barillaro's former chief of staff claims the then deputy New South Wales Premier has stated as early as 2019 that he wanted a New York trade job for, quotes, when I get the fuck out of this place. This is John, or this is what the guy says John said. Don't want to get sued. I don't think I have the ability to raise a million dollars in a crowd fund. This is it. <clears throat> this is the job for when I get the fuck out of this place. Connell alleges that Barillaro told him after the meeting. Uh, and the chief of staff says, but John, the agent general, which is the London equivalent uh, of this job, will be filled well before you retire from this place. John then responded, I don't want to go to London. Fuck that. I'm off to New York. This guy sounds like me. God. That's exactly what I think. Fuck that. I want to do comedy in New York. When I get the fuck out of this country, I'm going to New York. We should get the taxpayer to give me half a million dollars to fucking do that and a million dollar office, pay for all my food and my travel, right? So now it's just absolutely looking like John has planned his retirement, gotten everything that he could out of politics, including maybe potentially some people say some stuff he shouldn't have been able to get out of politics. 
and he's just created this job for himself to basically just live on a permanent holiday and do fuck all funded by the taxpayer in a job that really has no accountability. It's not like people voted for him. That's the ultimate job in politics. You don't want to be a politician. You want to get put into a role where no one can vote you out of it. You just have the job, Mm. right? And at this point, you know, I was annoyed about this, but to be honest, I'm just impressed. And i got to give it up to John. Absolutely well done. Scam king of the year. I couldn't have done this. And and I and I'm I'm a pretty good scam artist. This is impressive now. You know? The only thing that sucks about this is he got caught. And I just love that if Friendly Geordies didn't dress up as fucking Luigi and do all of this stupid shit to John, he just would have had that trade role and gotten gotten away with everything that he had supposedly appeared to have done, allegedly, if some YouTuber didn't make all this stuff about it. And it's awesome that the news just wasn't covering any of this dude's behavior until a YouTuber starts talking about it. And uh, I think this says a lot about the state of our media is that they just wouldn't let him get away with it. So he's re- he's now resigned from that job and I hope, for- hope he just fucks off. Uh, but yeah, very interesting that uh, now that ICAC's looking into it, the Corruption Commission, now other people are like, yeah... Pretty fucking bullshit. (laughs) Now, it's time for the worst part of the podcast. Miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh, Send me your emails. If you have any life advice, uh, questions, if you have any stories, if you would like my opinion on something, send an email to podcast at loosespears.com. All right, we have uh, this uh, email. Really close flirty friend sent me a photo of her tits while having a small thing with a guy. Hey, man, I love your stuff. I've been watching since I was 13 or 14. I'm now 17. Just recently subbed to Patreon. Thank you very much, dude. Anyway, I would love to hear your advice uh, or hear you laugh or roast me about my dumb situation. A girl I've been friends with for ages became really flirty with me this year and a bit last year to the point where we would uh, and continue to joke about having sex a lot. At one point, some girl at my school tried insulting me by calling me a virgin, and then my friend jumps in saying, are you implying that me and my hubby aren't having sex? What are you doing, man? You're dropping the ball. Recently, she got into this really weird small thing with a guy. She's been acting really weird about it and doesn't seem to even like him, but we keep bringing him up to me. Hard to explain a bit, but yeah, she was acting very weird about this one. I stopped flirting with her during this time. Yeah, you're an idiot. <laughs> you're, dude, can you not read this behavior? The girl has said in front of other people that she wants to get involved with you and you're like, oh, I guess she's just my friend telling jokes. And then she starts flirting with someone else and telling you about it To make you jealous and you're like, oh, I guess I should stop flirting with her because she's now interested in someone else. What are you, a fucking robot, dude? (laughs) Ask her out. (laughs) You immediately understood what she was trying to do. Oh, I've done that before. I'm telling you, bro, (laughs) what are you doing? (laughs) Oh, this guy, girls don't hit on you. They put you in a position to hit on them Mm -hmm. by saying, oh, We should have sex. What else do you want? (laughs) How does it get any clearer than that? Right. About a week and a half later, I found out that he cheated on her after week one of their small thing. I told her and she went into denial about it, which was very weird. Usually she's really worried about this stuff and gets pissed and crying sad fast with even less proof that we had in this situation. Yeah, because she doesn't care about this guy. She's just she doesn't doing this to provoke you into doing anything. She's trying to make you jealous. Hundred percent. Anyway, we get back to being real flirty while on a call. What? What the fuck are you doing? But this time, the flirting starts to be more than usual somehow. After a couple of days, she sends me a snap saying that she has bigger boobs than people think. Then sends me a photo going down her shirt, looking at her boobs with the caption "See, you're allowed to look." After that step up in flirting, I start to think about asking her out. (laughs) 
What? Only just now it's occurred to you that this girl might be interested in you? Oh, man. To see if she wants to take it further than just really flirty friends. But then when hanging out, I found out she still has a small thing with the guy. Yeah, because she's trying to fucking tell you to... Hey, I'm like into boys and if you're not going to act on it, I'm going to find it elsewhere. Um, the next day we're hanging out and she's being really flirty again. At one point trying to come into a closed change room with me. Can you... She goes into the corner and says, don't worry, I won't look in a flirty voice. Later that day, I tell her that we can't keep flirting if she's going to have a thing with this guy. Anyway, long story short, what do you think based on this? I'm pretty annoyed and a bit sad at this point, especially considering how close we've been this year and how well we know each other. She's acting really weird. Is she? Or is she hitting on you and you're acting fucking oblivious? <laughs> she isn't a cheaty person and would never have a thing with someone like this guy, but for some reason is. Gee, I wonder why. why she's why? probably liked you the whole time. Absolutely. <laughs> she's trying to get you to notice. Absolutely. I know they're not having sex or anything like that and all her friends I've talked to have noticed how weird their thing is. For example, at the hangout we had... The day I found out, they were still having a thing. They didn't even talk when he left the room. She just started flirting with me about a joke we had. I don't know if you found this story funny. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are... You might need to get checked for autism, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I, I Like, you're in a situation where a girl is laying down some very heavy signs and you're not picking it up. She's into you. What else, do you, what else does she have to do? Send you a letter that says, hey, I am hitting on you. Would you like to have sex with me or be my boyfriend? Like, <laughs> dude, you need to like really think about the actions that are on display here and either act on it or tell her you're not interested. Especially if this girl has like a, a, a non-described thing with this guy that they're not doing anything, they're not dating She's obviously just telling you to make you do something. You know what she's doing? She's probably checking that you're gay now. That's what she's doing. <laughs> she's sending you pictures of her boobs. What do you want? Man. Please ask her out. And when you do, can you tell us? I want a follow-up email. Yeah, I would love a follow-up. <laughs> yeah. For the love of God, <laughs> ask this girl out. Because, yeah. I don't know. That's some shit that makes me feel sorry for women. <laughs> but you know what? I, I've i done that. When I was like 16, 17, when a girl has like shown really heavy interest in me and I've gone, huh, my friend is acting weird. I wish I could find a girl that liked me. I've done that shit before. <laughs> 100%. And it, and it is confusing because girls don't do what you think would be the logical thing, which is say, hi, I'm interested in you. I would like to start a relationship. No girl does that. They they put themselves in a situation that would make it easy for you to do that. Like, I don't know, something subtle, like sending them a photo of their breasts. <laughs> God. Yeah, girls get shy. Yeah, but, it, you know, that's like uh, it's a man's job to kind of state their intentions and go, hey, let's uh, let's do this. Girls just either make it hard or easy for you to do that. Um, yeah, man, this one, this one's exciting. This will be the last one, then we'll, then we'll uh, leave it there unless you, uh, you want to check out the Patreon episode, which is up right now, patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Support the show. I'm coming to your show with my very Christian family member. Uh, <coughs> hey, Lewis, <laughs> what's funny about that? Maybe they'll have a good time. <laughs> I don't see the problem here. Lucebiz.com, get your tickets. Hey, my name is Sam. I will prefix this with the fact that I'm 16 years old. Oh, a lot of emails from young people today. And I currently live with my very religious family. We attend church three times a week, every week. Oh, boring. Dedication. Three times a week to talk about the same fucking book. I get church every Sunday. I did it for a little bit when I was a teenager. Yeah, same. It's a little bit fun. There's something in there for you if you want. 
three times a week? It's a part-time job. Mm. I guess everyone needs to have a hobby. Uh, After years of wanting to attend one of your shows, I lied to my parents about the kind of comedy that you do. (laughs) And I was able to book to see your Friday show in Brisbane. All right. However, as I cannot drive, my parents said I have to attend with my older brother. All right. That's less bad than the parents. That would be fine, except your humor is dark and it would not align with my family's Christian values. So my concern is my brother, who does not know who you are, will tell my parents that I've lied and taken him to an inappropriate show. My options are risk it and hope he enjoys it enough that he doesn't tell my parents. Somehow try to get him to not go and just catch an Uber in. Show him your content now to test the waters and hope he doesn't tell my parents and stop me from going. Or I'm open to any other ideas that you can come up with. What do you suggest I do and what is the best way to go about it? Have a shit one. Do not read. I want to thank you for everything you do. Your podcast gets me through the week and your videos are always the highlight of my day. I can't put into how much I appreciate what you do. I wish you the very best and hope to see you in Brisbane. Thanks, man. Um, Right. Are you not supposed to read that out loud? Well, yeah, it says do not read. So I'm, I'm not sure why he would write that if he didn't want me to read it. Um, so, look. Yeah, just go. I mean, what's, what's going to happen? I would say if it was your parents, I would maybe <laughs> not. But if it was your older brother, even if he says that, oh, it wasn't appropriate, you can just go, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I'd say that. Your parents didn't see it. He's not going to be able to accurately describe what the show is because as soon as he, I don't know, everyone else is like, as soon as I leave a show, I'm like, oh, yeah, he told this great joke about hot dogs. You know, it's <laughs> not like he's going to be able to recite it word for word. Just go. Don't tell your brother about it. Chances are he'll fucking love it too. I've had plenty of people go, oh, I'm worried about my parents or I'm worried about my girlfriend or I'm worried about my boyfriend. I don't know if they're going to like it. They don't know who you are. And then they end up just... Really enjoying it. Um, you took your parents? Yeah, my parents are conservative, but they still enjoyed it. There you go. I loved like, it. I perform to so many people who are not my fans all the time. I'm good enough to turn people around. Like, there's plenty of times where I've done, you know, my whole thing is like saying shit you're not supposed to and then figuring out a way to make it funny enough to make it okay. You'll be fine. Uh, worst case scenario, you'll get in trouble and they'll go, oh, don't do it again. And then next year when I come around, you'll be 17. You'll be able to leave the house by yourself. No worries. Come. You'll enjoy it. Hopefully your older brother will. If he doesn't, uh, who cares? What are you going to do? Not live your life? You go to church three times a week for them. The least they can do is let you enjoy a guy that says fuck every now and then. I say way more than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it'll be fun. The shows are going to be the shows are going to be fucking awesome. I'm really ex- excited for it. I reckon they're going to be great. And uh, look, if some people get annoyed... It'll be worth it. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Make sure you come and see me. I'm going all over the country. We've got uh, uh, Adelaide. We've got Gold Coast. We've got Brisbane. We've got Melbourne. uh, We've got uh, Ballarat, Geelong. We have Perth. We have Tassie coming up at some point. We've got some other shows. Check it out, loosebears.com, Newcastle. Check the website. We're adding dates all the time, and they're really going quick. These are smaller shows, so uh, don't sleep. Shows are already selling out. Melbourne's almost gone. Brisbane, we've added a third show. It's filling up really quick. I want to see you there. Loosespears.com. Get your tickets. And if you would like more podcasts, we're going to continue right now through the full episode on Patreon. Uh, I'll see you over there, all right? Have a shit one. Bye. (laughs) 